What's up guys, it's Alex Ferrelli. Welcome back to today's episode. Today's question comes from Julie, who's in a little bit of a pickle here. And uh, she writes me her story, and she's in a serious, healthy relationship that she really likes, everything's going well. And, but she recently finds herself in sort of a spot where she's decided to work out regularly for her New Year's resolution. She's been going to the gym. And over the last couple months, the trainer who she's working out with, um, ha they've had sort of a chemistry going on. And, you know, they're at the gym, they're working out, they're sweating, they got endorphins and serotonin going. And um, she finds that there's a little bit of a sexual energy going on there. And she feels aroused and she's sweating. And she's wondering what to do because she's nervous that if she continues exercising with this person that perhaps there's going to be a line in the future that she's going to cross and she may have regrets she's wondering you know it's kind of even she thinks it's a little stupid maybe she even feels this way because you know she hasn't done anything wrong yet of course it's very innocent at this moment maybe she's even telling herself stories in her head so what does she do Julie first of all the fact that you even feel this way that you're even writing to me that you even have some idea that there could be some though there's some obvious sexual tension here even if it's just a story you're telling yourself and it's not anything that's reciprocated is definitely something to pay attention to now there's only really two ways that this story ends um, if you pursue this energy that you have with this guy going on it's not going to lead to anything but sex let's be honest it's not going to lead to a new business relationship or a new friendship or anything else because you are already really charged sexually this energy is now building between you and this person and each time you guys encounter each other and see each other it escalates a little bit more and it that energy only goes one place and that's to the finish line which is sex so there will be a line in the future you haven't got to it yet but there will be a point that you reach a line where if you cross it, there is no turning back, okay? Now that line is not what you might think, which is the first line of physical contact. It's, oh, well, if I kiss him, then I'm not gonna kiss him because if I kiss him, then I'm gonna have sex with him. But in reality, the compromise that you make to go down that physical route is much sooner than that because before you kiss him, you have to put yourself in the spot to allow that to happen. It's not gonna happen at the gym in front of 30 other people. So maybe it's the first time that you guys work out together at home because the gym was closed and it's late and you give yourself an excuse or a reason to make that happen. But the point is that this happens way sooner. It's a text message with an innuendo and a smiley face or something. So you really only have two choices. You can either pursue this energy over here that you got going on with this guy that will only lead to one place, whether it happens now or in the future. That's where it's going. Or you can cut it off. Now, I'm not really, I can't tell you what to do, but I can tell you this. If you are going to pursue this energy over here with this guy, you are doing it at the expense of your meaningful long-term relationship over here. And in my opinion, you are making a big trade-off. You're trading a huge amount of a big pot, a huge amount of equity over here for something that's really small over here because you're not going to leave your primary relationship for this guy. You just want something totally different out of this guy over here. You want something fun that once you indulge in that activity, it's done. It's like you built up, you reach the climax and it's like an orgasm. You're done. You're good to go. So I think that it would be a little bit of a mistake. But if you are going to pursue this energy over here, you should know what you are getting yourself into and you should think long and hard about it. And you should know that before you get to that line that you cannot turn back from, you need to have a plan, right? It's like in poker when you play a big pot, you don't want to put half your stack in before on the flop and not know what, could, not know what to do when the next card comes, right? And if you get to that line, know that like in poker, when you put in half your stack, you you're going you're going with the hand no matter what no matter what the next card is you already made your decision right so right now 
This is my advice for you, Julie. Right now, the pot is still small, okay? You've invested some money pre-flop, and you can still fold without losing more of your stack. So I would cut it off, and I would cut it off now before you get to a point where you could compromise longer, right? You're probably thinking, oh, shit, well, I already paid for four more sessions. I'm just going to finish the four sessions, and then and then I'm done. But at the, then you're putting yourself in a spot to compromise now. Four more sessions later, the pot's too big and you can't fold, you're stuck, you're going to the river, you're going to lose your stack, and it's a tournament, you can't rebuy. So that's all I got for you, Julie. I just acted. It's on you. Peace.